Hello everyone, welcome to the Tea Crane. I'm Tia Sawson and today I need to tell you something about tea whisks. Tea whisks, when you buy them, you get this beautiful box. They look like this in their pristine shape. They're, they're really beautiful. They're, they're works of art. People spend endless hours crafting these objects. They're made from one single piece of bamboo. This is the single piece of bamboo. Then that piece of bamboo is split up till here and uh, the flesh of the bamboo on the inside, which you can see here, this fleshy part that is cut out and only the tines of the, um, the, the outside, the skin, is, remained for, uh, is maintained for the tines. So it takes hours and hours and hours to make these tea whisks, these beautiful things. Um, but in reality, these things, they are disposable items. In tea ceremonies in the past, they were used only once. They were made for one single occasion, thrown away, and then a new one would be used. Because tea practitioners, they would want them in these pristine states. Right? After you've used them once, this is, this is a tea whisk that's been used once. See, it's still, still very beautiful, it has a good uh, state. You see the, the tines, they start to get um, a little bit more crooked, right? Now, why I wanted to talk about tea whisks really is because I read a few comments here and there, heard from a few people that um, a tea whisk is something you buy for life. Um, Matcha is becoming more popular in, uh, in the West um, and tea whisks, of course they are necessary if you want to whisk a bowl of tea. So without a whisk you're not going to get a beautiful froth, you're not going to get that uh, consistency of that pure bowl of matcha that you want. So you need a tea whisk. And if you have ever looked for a tea whisk you can see that these things can cost 30, 40, 50 dollars. Um, they are not cheap. But the fact that they're not cheap does not mean that you buy one and they last you long. It doesn't mean that if you buy a more expensive one that it's going to last you longer. In essence, these things are disposables. And you'll see over time, they won't last you. This is a tea whisk that I've used for quite a while. This is another one. Look at the tines. They don't look as pristine anymore. And a lot of the tines they've just been eaten up. I've got worse types. This one's completely closed up. The tines also This one has almost nothing remaining on one side. With this one you can even see here that there's a piece that is broken off. And so these pieces, they, they will gradually break off and get torn off and they end up in your tea or um, you pull them off beforehand. So these are examples of, of really um, worn out tea whisks and the more you use them, the quicker it will happen. So what I'm trying to say is it's not the reason that they're expensive is not because they will last you forever. These are meant to be used only a few times before they need to be replaced. It's an expensive something to get. Um, gradually they get worn down and, and there are people, I see people that have only tea whisks this tall and they keep using them. If it works, it works, but it's not the purpose of them. And it's a waste, of course, because people have spent hours and hours and hours and hours on making these. 
and then you have to replace them rather quickly. So, what we do in our tea school to uh, repurpose these old tea whisks, and it's, it's quite a good functional um, thing, I will show you. We make little rakes out of them so that we can use those rakes to shape the inside of the tea caddy and we make a beautiful mountain out of the matcha powder in the tea caddy so these tea whisks we can repurpose them so this is what we make of them so these rakes these tines they're they're actually a tea whisk split up cut up and um, we use them to inside the tea caddy make a mountain out of the tea powder. I will show you how we do, how we use them later. First, let me show you how we make them. So, first what you're going to need is your old tea whisk. And then, something like a bamboo splitter. Right? This you use to chop up your tea whisk and well for the first time round we just put it somewhere in the center of the tea whisk and uh, we just split it. The whisk is now split. You might want to get some of these tines that we're not using off. So, there are a lot of these long tines. You've got tines on the inside, you've got tines on the outside. You might want to get rid of uh, the tines on the inside so that you create a hollow and only outside uh, tine piece. So, here again, let's do that again. We've got the tines on the outside and the tines on the inside. Put your finger in between the tines on the inside and you fold them over and pull a little bit so that you can get them all out. There we go. All right, having done that, we're just going to continue splitting the tea whisk up. Um, this should amount to another three pieces. You don't want to get them too wide, but you also don't want to get them too narrow. So we have a look at how much, let's see, how much we want for, uh, for one rake, so I think that should be sufficient. Let's chop it up there. Split, and then the next piece we also split in half. There we go. Three pieces, three rakes. Do that with the other pieces as well. Ooh. And don't worry if you don't have a bamboo splitter like this, you could with a larger you could do it with a larger knife or an axe you could do that basically with anything um, anything that is large enough to cut up these pieces all right let's see uh, sometimes got broken so we want to put them off now let's have a look at we've got one of these and and it looks very rough still um, we've got this the central piece of the, the tea whisk uh, still on it. The tines are rather long, so first what we'll do is uh, again with our, our cutter we'll, we'll chop this piece off and we might want to chop off a little bit more. So we 
might want to put it a bit deeper and see if we can get chopping. And you see that what I'm doing here is I'm splitting that lower part as well, getting the flesh off, gone. There we go. And this was the piece with the bamboo center on it and now we've got a uh, nice smooth handle here all right i don't think you need to do much more to it you might want to polish it a little bit but eventually this too is a is a tool and over time you will be disposing of it good now the tines are a bit too long and uneven so i use a uh, <clears throat> a plant cutter for it and don't cut too shallow do it too low you might want to keep them rather long but maybe also not too long so around around here maybe maybe a bit more you want to cut them even there you go nice and straight and you've got yourself a beautiful rick great now you've made this bunch of, of rigs, but you can only use one at a time. So what do you do with them? Give them to your friends. Repurpose your old tea whisks, give them to your friends, replace an old one you had. And um, yeah, these are, they're really functional. And so now let's get into, let me show you how you use these. So, I have a tea caddy. Now just put tea in it. As you can see, it's all over the place. It's not nice uh, in any way. And so I'm going to use the rake that I just made to shape the inside of the tea caddy in a nice mountain. So I press the outside of the tines against the inner wall of the tea caddy and in an upward diagonal motion I press the tea towards the center and collect it in a nice hill. I do this while I'm rotating with my left hand the tea caddy and over time you'll see that this becomes a nice hill in the center so that is the result but now against the sides there are well there's this residue of tea so you want to use a tissue to wipe that off and also you can see that the grain on the mountain is very um, coarse so again rotating the tea caddy while slightly tapping it with the right hand middle finger will make it smoother right traditionally you would use a feather brush or uh, some kind of brush you can replace it with I think everyone at home has uh, tissues so it would make a uh, pointy tissue and just butt it off a little bit and then I would use the tissue on the inside to clean the inside of the tea caddy get a little bit of tea powder out there and clean where you've last cleansed and that should give a much neater appearance and then also the outside and then you might also want to clean this off it's got tea sticking to it so you might want to clean that off too Clear the lid. Make 
make sure that everything is neat. And then your tea caddy is ready. And so this old tea whisk has now been repurposed to make a beautiful mountain in your tea caddy. So that's all folks, thanks for joining, um, I hope you learned something from this, I hope you can now repurpose your tea whisks and um, well, do something functional with them, I hope you can well, use this moment to mindfully prepare yourself getting ready for your bowl of tea, because of course this is done what you do before you start your preparation of tea, it's the preparation of the preparation of tea. And in a way, it's a, it's a way to mindfully get yourself ready, get yourself in the right mind of, uh, state of mind to begin uh, your preparation of a bowl of tea. So, and having everything clear, uh, clean and ready is, uh, is of course important. So, um, thank you for watching. I hope this was educational. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and um, looking forward to see you again in another video. To stay up to date on updates, subscribe, hit the bell, and um, see you soon. Goodbye.